November 13, 2010, Don Alejo was 77 years old when the cartel gave him an ultimatum. Leave your farm within 24 hours or you'll be dead. Little did they know that this man wasn't giving up so easily, and what followed was a bloody cartel rendition resembling the movie Home Alone. A hero emerges. 1993, Alejo Garza Tamez was born in Nuevo Leon, Mexico. His upbringing instilled in him a strong work ethic and a deep appreciation for leading an honest life, unlike those working for the Mexican cartels. And as Alejo reached adulthood, he had already established a secure financial foundation, and so he decided to invest in 2,000 hectares of land in Tamaulipas, Mexico, and he named the land San Jose. San Jose Ranch became Alejo's pride and joy, and it made him a fortune. In his community, Alejo quickly gained a positive reputation for working hard and being reliable. Many friends and relatives would state that a promise from Don Alejo was as good as a contract. And not only was he a good businessman, but he also had a passion for hunting and was known for his incredible accuracy in his very own shooting club in Allende. You could say that this man was prepared for battle because with the ongoing war at the time, Alejo knew it was a matter of time before the cartel would come knocking at his door to offer their protection for a monthly fee. Protection from the cartel themselves, obviously. And despite the strict gun laws in this country, Alejo fought hard until he was able to obtain permits to own a sizable collection of hunting rifles, as if he knew that one day he would have to put those skills to use in a matter of life and death. November 13, 2010, 77-year-old Don Alejo was overseeing his workers as they went on with their daily routine in the ranch when a bunch of gang members disrupted his peace. Those men belonged to none other than Los Zetas, a Mexican cartel that's basically synonymous with grotesque acts of violence and terror, and once considered by the US government as the most technologically advanced, sophisticated, and dangerous cartel in Mexico. And as you can expect, the men who visited Don Alejo's ranch were not there on friendly terms. No, they were there to make Don Alejo go from a wealthy businessman to a homeless Mexican citizen overnight. Their terms were clear. Leave your ranch within 24 hours or face the consequences. By now, we should all know that there's one group of people we should never mess with. The Mexican cartels. They're powerful, vicious, and merciless. So if I were the one threatened by those guys, I certainly wouldn't tell them to bring on their worst. Yet, that's exactly what Don Alejo did. And let us remind you what happened last time someone refused to accept their terms. 2011, when a legitimate casino in Monterey refused to pay protection money, members of Los Zetas arrived in broad daylight, poured gasoline in front of all the entrances and exits, and set that whole building on fire, killing 52 people. So, how do you think Don Alejo's audacious decision worked out for him? Before we get to the outcome of this encounter, let's first take a closer look at Los Zetas and the extent of their power. Special Forces to Narcos 1997, 31 members of the Mexican Army's elite airborne Special Forces group defected and began working as hired assassins, bodyguards, and drug runners. The leader of the Gulf Cartel, Josiel Cardenas Guillen, saw an opportunity and quickly recruited the group of deserters to become his own private army, which he named Los Zetas. With their military efficiency, Los Zetas fundamentally changed the game of the Mexican drug war. It was no longer about street gangs having wild shootouts. Instead, it became about disciplined paramilitary units operating with massive firepower and extreme ruthlessness. They even made military medals of honor for those who fought particularly well. This also marked the beginning of an era characterized by sheer terror and unparalleled violence, cementing Los Zetas position as the most brutal cartel in Mexico. August 2010, Mexican troops entered a ranch in San Fernando, Tamaulipas, and discovered a mass grave containing the bodies of 72 people, 58 men, and 14 women. They were poor immigrants from Central America who Los Zetas had executed in military style. 2011, another mass grave was found in San Fernando. However, this time 193 tortured and mutilated bodies were found. 
Rumors have it that they were forced to fight each other with hammers and machetes, with the survivors being forcibly recruited as hitmen for Los Zetas. 2014. Two unfortunate men from the town of Allende were thought to have stolen money from Los Zetas, whose response to those allegations were quick and brutal. Armed units came to Allende, destroyed 80 homes with heavy machinery, and slaughtered between 300 and 500 people. And while it's the scale of their violence that caught the world's attention, what was also really alarming about Los Zetas was that they came up with a new model for what a cartel could be and do. While traditional cartels focus solely on trade routes for their narcotics into the US, Los Zetas, perhaps based on their military background, would move into a territory and literally take control of it like an invading army, bit by bit. And now, it was Don Alejo's turn to face the devil. However, they weren't used to 77-year-old men telling them that they were going nowhere. So the cartel had to step up their ultimatum. Tonight this is our land, and if you're still here, you'll be counted as a trespasser on our property, and the punishment is death. And based on that quick rundown I just gave you of Los Zetas, Don Alejo had without a doubt said yes to a battle not many people would even think twice about. And while we may not have been there at the moment, hence why we can't tell you exactly what he said, you'll soon realize he might have responded with something like, Bring your best men, I'll be waiting for you. Why, you ask? Well, because Don Alejo decided that the fruit of his life's work, effort, and dedication would be defended, if necessary, with his own life. The Last Stand When Los Zetas men told Don Alejo that he had just 24 hours to get his things in order before they would return and kill him if he was still on the property, Don Alejo's response was, I'll be waiting for you. He decided that he wouldn't hand over his lands to organize crime without a fight. That same day, he gathered up his workers and told them not to show up for work the next day. And what was the reason? Nothing. He said nothing about the reason for giving him a day off. Nothing about the threats given to him by Los Zetas. In fact, he just told them to spend time with their families. Unbeknownst to them, their boss saved their lives. As for himself, he made sure to call his wife just before the sun went down. He knew this might have been his last phone call. So he told her what every man would tell his wife in that situation. You know what, my love? I love you very much. All my love came to me, amor. She said as she was happy to hear from him. In her moment of joy, she added, Tomorrow, God willing, we're going to talk to her. And instead of telling her about the danger he was in, he told her he would call her at 8 a.m. the next morning. Then started a cartel version of the movie Home Alone, as he spent the next many hours cleaning and setting up every firearm at his disposal. From pistols to high-powered rifles, he placed a weapon at each door and window of the ranch as part of a defensive strategy that turned his house into some kind of military barrack. And then, true to his word, he waited for Los Zetas men to arrive. November 14, 2010, shortly after 4 a.m., several trucks poured into the ranch. The men got out of their vehicles, armed to the teeth, and surrounded the ranch, hoping to intimidate whoever was inside this big house. As a final warning, they fired into the air. They probably expected no one to be home, and for this to be yet another day at the office. After all, they were about to evict a 77-year-old man from his home. I mean, what could a 77-year-old man do against maybe a dozen top military-trained Los Zetas hitmen who probably enjoyed torturing and killing people? Well, what was supposed to be an easy takeover turned into an hours-long battle. Soon after they arrived, they were met with a hail of bullets coming from the windows. Stunned and shocked, the men quickly took cover and returned fire, thinking that they had walked right into an ambush and that the old man must have lined up all of his men inside the house to fight for the ranch. They didn't know that a 77-year-old Don Alejo was running from window to window firing at him, making it appear as if there were multiple shooters in the house and also making it hard to know where the next bullet's coming from. Don Alejo's years of hunting were serving him well, and so one by one, the Los Zetas men began falling down. Shocked by the resistance they were met with, the remaining men took the fight up a notch. They resorted to bombarding the house with grenades, but even so, the shots were still heard from inside the house and more men kept falling. 
As the cartel members looked around, they noticed how they were falling flies. And so you'd expect them to either surrender or escape the battleground before meeting the same fate as their peers. But then again, remember that we're talking about Los Zetas, a cartel who gained their notoriety based on instilling fear in people. Backing down from a fight wasn't part of their modus operandi. If a story like that were to reach newspapers with the headline being, 77-year-old man defends ranch against multiple Los Zetas hitmen, their reputation is gone in a heartbeat. It was already early morning, and the gunmen knew that the battle had likely alerted the authorities, and so they decided to not seize the property after all and rush to their vehicles, leaving behind six of their own. And they were right. The Mexican Marines arrived shortly after they left, only to be met with a dreadful scene. Over 1,000 shell casings littered the property, and bullet holes were still smoking. Outside the home, they found four bodies, as the remaining two were just unconscious. Could you imagine being in their shoes, waking up to find yourself being hauled off to jail because your gang left you behind? And when the Marines entered the house and found Don Alejo's body, they were left speechless, unable to believe the scene before their eyes. A 77-year-old man who, before death, took out six gunmen fighting the same as the best soldiers, with dignity, courage, and honor. Nobody, or in our case, almost nobody, could hold out against a group of heavily armed gunmen. Only Alejo Garza Dames. He quickly became a cultural icon for his efforts in defending himself against those who, if left unchecked, would wreak havoc on everything in their paths, turning the world to ashes. And as for Los Zetas, it has recently become fragmented, its influence and power nearly diminishing entirely. However, Los Zetas' ruthless methods and tactics are now being replicated by older cartels and some newer ones, like the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, under the commands of El Mencho. For, unfortunately, this is how the drug world works. Once one cartel shows unprecedented levels of violence, the others have to follow and go even more extreme. Check out this video about why you should never mess with El Mencho to learn more about how CJNG deals with people standing in their way. But beware, it's insane.